it's Simone Show with today's session of Get Schooled. Ready for your pop quiz on packet transport? Okay, here we go. Which technology is considered packet transport? Is it A, ASAP, B, TMPLS, or C, ADD? If you know the answer, I'll be your new BFF. Sit back and relax. It's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphis, and we're here to talk with Tom Rarick today about packet transport. What sort of applications are we talking about? Are we talking mobile? Are we talking, you know, access? Are we talking pure transport, backbone transport, all of the above? I think it is all of the above, Dave, but uh, one of the more interesting drivers initially now actually is uh, video transport. Uh, as the big carriers get involved in providing video to residential subscribers, it requires them to make a uh, significant change to their infrastructure. They have to provide much more bandwidth than they had in the past. And oh, by the way, this, this uh, bandwidth is all packet-based now. This is packet-based video. So it's driving them to consider uh, alternative technologies going forward. But that's just one. Other applications are certainly enterprise services, and in large part, enterprises would love to have Ethernet jacks going into the carrier networks, because at the end of the day, enterprise networks within are, are all Ethernet-based and IP-based. So they'd love to have Ethernet connectivity across the WAN. Wireless as well uh, tends to be moving toward Ethernet as the uh, fundamental technology for interconnecting uh, cell sites back into the network and the services themselves for wireless are all becoming packet based as well. So we see everything moving, services are becoming packet based, the interconnections between equipment are moving toward Ethernet and uh, this is helping encourage the network to move toward this packet transport model. Tom, when we talk about packet transport, that's, that's a huge topic with a lot of different components. So what is it that, that we want to talk about with respect to, to packet transport? Well, Dave, uh, packet transport represents the first fundamental shift in transport technologies since really the deployment of Sonnet and ubiquitous optics within the backbone networks. What we're seeing is that all the services that are riding on transport networks now are becoming packet-based. And uh, the original drivers for TDM networks, primarily voice, but other services as well, are tending to go away. So what we're looking for is a transport network that has all the same characteristics of quality and operational ability as Sonnet networks have been, but is optimized for packet-based services. So this is a fundamental change we're seeing in our networks going forward. Now there is a, uh, several different technologies that are all either in development or exist today that are trying to solve this problem. We can start with pseudo wires. They've been around for uh, several years now, and there are quite a few deployments of uh, pseudo wire over MPLS type networks. Came out of the IETF, and uh, in part, it's a way to leverage a router based infrastructure to provide a more uh, varied range of services. You also saw, uh, perhaps in response a bit to that, some work out of the ITU called TMPLS or Transport MPLS. It was an intent to help simplify to some degree some of the complexities that come along with IP MPLS, but also to prove perhaps its uh, transport characteristics in the areas of maybe OANM and the like. Then you have another option coming out of the IEEE and more of the, call it the pure ethernet environment. And this is uh, what's been coined provider backbone transport or PBT. What it does is it is a technology that supports uh, another layer of MAC addresses on top of the original care, uh, customer max, and uh, but allows it to be provisioned as opposed to a fully automated uh, learn network like Ethernet typically is. And the idea is that it gives carriers ability to engineer this Ethernet network, uh, something that Ethernet networks typically aren't. So yeah, there are these three different options and they all are trying to solve different, the problems slightly differently and they all have some advantages over the other. Uh, time will tell, I guess, who, which ones will be the winner in the long run. I fully anticipate that uh, carries will have to address uh, islands, call it, islands of pseudo-wire technology interoperating with either TMPLS or PBT technology, and uh, they'll have to work with vendors and the standards communities to find ways to get these technologies to interwork properly. 
And uh, in the end of the day, what do you want? You want services that reliably are carried end to end across a carrier infrastructure in a reasonable cost structure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these will have to be addressed. You've talked a lot about the technologies and we have some definitions out there and, and some differentiation. So what is it that Telabs is doing in the arena of any of these technologies? Um, you know, are we, are we favoring one or seeing one as being one of favor in the industry right now? Is, is, is there one that we're seeing more often than the other? Are we keeping an eye on all of them? How are we addressing things? Uh, well, I'll answer that in a couple of ways. One, with uh, multi-service switching uh, and uh, interworking, we are fully behind the pseudo-wire work that goes, uh, goes on in the ITF and have deployed uh, products supporting this capability in large part because it is a very uh, good solution providing layer two services and layer two interworking. Uh, so we're actively behind that, been deploying this type of equipment for uh, several years at this point. Additionally, when it comes to applying this technology to our uh, transport products, we're finding that some carriers are thinking that in the nearer term, over the next few years, that pseudo-wire technology is a good way to start, in part because this technology must interwork with the existing infrastructure of IPMPLS and pseudo-wire equipment. So we're providing this kind of capabilities in our transport equipment as well. Uh, going forward, we're certainly following and are active in the, the standards groups that are developing TMPLS and PBT. And, uh, we will implement these as we see the market opportunity is appropriate for us to put these on the products. Uh, the capability is there for us to do this. I think it's one of market timing. When, when is the right time to do this kind of functionality in our products? The correct answer was B, TMPLS. By the way, if you missed it, you don't have ADD. Go grab a cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. See you next time. I'm OUT.